Is the road to success in life a neat, tidy one? Or is a rich, happy life inherently messy? If you believe the glossy magazines, this is what a desk should look like. We feel proud when we have a tidy desk and anxious when the clutter starts to build up. But we all know that when things get busy, they also get messy. Messiness isn't just part of life, it can actually enhance our lives. We'll come back to my messy desk later. First, let me show you what mess can do for the true greats. In 1975, the jazz musician Keith Jarrett was preparing one of his improvised piano concerts in the city of Cologne. But there'd been a mistake. An old rehearsal piano had been delivered to the stage. Out of tune, sticky keys, harsh, tinny upper notes, and too small for the concert venue. It was unplayable. But Jarrett felt he had to try. And so, in front of a packed auditorium, he sat down at the unplayable piano and began. It was a magical evening. All the adjustments that Jarrett had to make to cope with the unplayable piano made the music better, not worse. Against his gloomy expectations, Jarrett produced one of the greatest jazz performances in history. Jarrett was forced into that situation, but other artists have decided to actively embrace disruption. Brian Eno has worked with everyone from Coldplay to David Bowie. In musical circles, he's famous for a deck of cards he calls the oblique strategies. If you're stuck, pull out a card and let the instructions mess with your mind. I don't um, generally pick more than one at a time. So the point is to sort of be faced with the dilemma of trying to deal with the card, whatever it happens to say. All these do is sort of structure your rambling thoughts a little bit. And they say, put some attention here and see what happens. People are at their most alert when they're in unfamiliar situations. So alertness is where everything good comes from, I think. It's where, when you suddenly think, wow, now that's interesting. And you use these cards on David Bowie's album, Heroes. We, we used to play a game sometimes where we would start an, something new, either I would start something or he would, and then we'd both pull a card and we'd keep it secret. His was destroy nothing and continue with immaculate consistency. And mine was take away the most important thing. So whatever started to become the center of the piece, I would try to take it out. <laughs> whatever the feeling of the piece was, he would try to keep endowing it with more of that feeling. And that became a lovely piece of music. That was a piece called Moss Garden. Another way to tap into your creative side is to improvise. Neuroscientists can peer inside the brains of improvising musicians and rappers using an fMRI scanner. They see areas of the prefrontal cortex that self-monitor are shut down. Other areas that allow self-expression become active. The improvising brain allows the mess of unfiltered, risky ideas to flow out. Mess can also be wielded as a weapon. Some of the most skilled competitors deliberately create situations that confuse everyone. They figure that they can improvise a response to the chaos faster than their opponents. And sometimes they're right. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Donald Trump was a master of mess during the Republican primary campaign. He dominated the news agenda with his outlandish statements, leaving his opponents looking slow to respond. So what about this messy desk? It's nothing to be ashamed of. This isn't an operating theater. We're talking about a constant flow of new information into the office. To deal with it, 
Some of us are pilers and some are filers. The filers try to tidy away emails and documents before they've really had a chance to understand them. We happy-go-lucky pilers, in contrast, allow our messy desks to organise themselves. The good stuff rises to the top, the junk sinks to the bottom, and every once in a while you can just take that useless lower layer and put it in the only filing cabinet that really matters. The round one on the floor.